it never ceases to amaze me how many property owners do not have an exit strategy. I see no reason why I should have one. Oh, they've got a basic idea of what the exit policy would be, but nothing really formal. The question is, why do you need an exit strategy? You need an exit strategy in order to ensure you achieve your highest and best result. At the very end, we decide to sell at some stage down the track. What if you don't have an exit strategy? From the past 35 plus years, I've found most owners sell because they have to sell, usually because of issues such as partnership disputes, divorces, health issues, financial issues, or new, bigger and better opportunities appear and need the cash to get involved with the new opportunities. This places owners at a distinct disadvantage in selling negotiations as potential buyers can sniff blood and negotiate accordingly. As negotiations drag on, owners lose the upper hand and have to give in to some of the conditions in order to get the sale over the line quickly. You don't want to be in that situation. The thing is, I've always recommended that my clients think about selling the property when they're actually about to buy it and develop an exit strategy accordingly. You're probably asking, why do I think about selling my property when I've just bought one? On the surface, this seems like a decent comment, which it really is. But let's discuss this further. How do you create the best exit strategy? I'll give you specific examples now, but I'll also cover more examples in my new book, Commercial Real Estate Investing for the Residential Investor, which is, I'll put a link in the end of this video, the show notes here. So anyway, the most important thing in real estate, as I say, location, location, location. Now that is true in most situations. I have found not in all situations. Buy in the location with the best value. I've noticed over the years that bad locations sometimes get better and Really good locations can get worse. Don't believe me? Think about high density housing issues, congestion with new roads, new developments. In the country towns, highway bypasses avoiding those towns altogether, closure of major industries, and the knock on effect of each of these items. I'll give you an example of one of my clients. He was an unusual investor. He always had a spare $5 million plus in his back pocket, which is not common. And because of that, he had a simple plan. He'd look for properties, usually on the market for six months, 12 months plus, in close inverted commas, bare locations. And he'd sit on them, because it was a cash buyer, he'd afford to sit on them, get some rent to pay most expenses, and either get a new development proposal for the property, or just wait till the area picked up which usually happened within one or two years of buying it. So again, he sold up and he, same thing again, rinse and repeat. Example of an office building that was on the market for a while. It was on the wrong side of the road in a major business area and the market wasn't very good, admittedly. So because there was no decent buyer, there was a hotel closing down. So he bought all the furniture from this hotel, which is being refurbished, decided to change it to a accommodation, boarding house situation, and had a great little business and getting a good return. Eventually, one or two years later, he sold it at a good price. So in another situation, it was um, in you know, a bad location, socioeconomic issues. Again, people didn't want to touch it. Had some people there for a minimal rentals, covering his basic costs, development for a larger development there, and again, sold it again. Another situation was a motel, and it was going through a divorce, and the accounts were all over the place. Obviously, this person was under stress, accounts all over the place, probably had staffing issues and stress from the, the situation with his relationships, and it filtered through, you can see, in the motel, and wasn't interested in the business. And I would say the the, the actual returns weren't as good as they should be. 
And what happens in normally when people buy properties like hotels, they usually come in with their accountant, their lawyer, their town planner, their architect, etc. Report after report, time, finance issues, that sort of thing. And this client of mine, cash buyer, bought it straight away, ended up with about a 20% profit within 12 months. We sold it again. But then again, as I said, no one's in that situation, but it's an example of what you can get into when you haven't planned for decent exit strategy. The best thing is to look around, see what's happening in the area. What is the political environment? Is it a swinging seat? Does it change from the right wing government to the left wing government all the time? Is it generally a right wing type of government situation? Is it a left wing situation? They say the political climate is like thinking of a boxing match between developers and preservationists and the referee forgot the rules. They're all over the place. You can never work out what changes are happening in the local council areas. An example of this was a site. It's a residential site. It was, I was amalgamating for a developer. Now we had to, looking at buying six properties, took about six months to get all the owners to agree. They all agreed to sell it and the price, etc. from the market. And we had offers and there was disagreements. One of the owners who happened to be the oldest one and lady over 80 years old, didn't want to sell, wanted to get the best deal for the, the kids, which were the other owners are much younger. And so we we're pushing for a higher price. We eventually got a developer to have a price. They agreed on it. Then they heard a rumor that this property was going to be changed from current medium density housing back to low density housing. And when I heard that, I thought, I haven't heard this happening anywhere. You know, I can see low density housing becoming high density housing, not the other way around. I've talked to other colleagues in the industry and never really heard of it before. And I said to the vendors, if your price is okay, why don't we sell now? It was a very motivated developer they wanted to buy. And they decided, well, let's hang on. Let's see what's going to happen. I couldn't really understand the logic. It was highly unlikely to happen. And if anything, the situation was worse than it was back to low density housing. I did get to find out about the political situation in the area. There happened to be elections coming up soon. And there was pushes to go to back to lower density housing. Again, I found it very difficult to understand. Then I got a phone call. The council had decided to go back to low density housing. Now, at the time, the offer was about five and a half million dollars as a medium density housing development. No DA of approval. And obviously the, the vendors were a bit upset with the change. They thought there was a low chance of happening. They sort of in some ways expected it to happen. They called me and saying, look, we've already arranged arrangements to buy another property or uh, we talked to the bank, uh, well, leasing somewhere else or something like that, ready to move on. What can we do? Can we sell it now? I said, no problem. The current buyer wasn't interested. As it is now, as low density housing, it's probably worth around three and a half million dollars. Overnight, they lost around 40% of the value because of the changing zone. So these things can happen. Not very common, but they can happen. They, politics changes. So look at the zoning. Are there any proposals for a change? Is the demographics changing? Are there new industries moving into the area? Walk around, talk to other business owners, chamber of commerce meetings, taxi drivers, shop owners, etc. I like to think of when people buy properties, to think of it like a utility property. Is it possible to change to another use? I call them utility properties to attract a different tenant. Things change all the time. As we've seen recently, you've got office buildings pretty good pre-COVID and same with retail. Wasn't too bad. And industrial were having a few problems. Then COVID came along. People started to work from home. Officers are having trouble leasing their premises. 
tenants have moved out. Retail, they slowed down a bit too because people are buying online. And what happened? Industrial becoming flavor of the month. Who knows what will happen in the next few years? Things change all the time. Is there any way you can change your property to suit the tenant? Even industrial properties. Yeah, you may have industrial property with a tenant which has got a lot of refrigeration. And when it becomes vacant, if you find the same sort of tenant, you probably do well. But it could be hard. Things could change in that food area. We need freezers and refrigerators as well. So think of these things when you're buying something. Look at your leases. Have you got long leases if you're looking at a long situation where it's an investment situation? On the other hand, the property you purchase may be a bit older, need a repair, need some maintenance issues. It could be in the process of being rezoned. So having long leases could place you at a distinct disadvantage because whether you want to develop it or sell it to a developer, you would need to have it vacant. Is there an advantage in buying neighborhood properties? Maybe if you can, you're in a situation where you can buy your neighbors, it could be worthwhile. We've had situations where I was managing properties, I was working for some clients. We bought adjoining properties over the years. It took three, four, five years. And you've got a piggy package to offer someone as a, the property may change zoning. And because it's a larger land holding, maybe more open for bigger developments and worth more money. Recall a situation where we, in residential building property, we bought, I got, we got a call from a client in the USA saying there's a block of land for sale in a particular area. The auction tomorrow night. Didn't know what this property was. I took a few phone calls to find out what it was. It was a large property on the water, 100 metre harbour frontage. Situation where the market was pretty cold. Interest rates were high. Market wasn't very good. Generally, in commercial and residential as well. And we were given a blank check. I was only one or two people there at the auction. There were no serious bidders. And we picked it up for $6.5 million, 2,700 square metres, 100 metre hyper frontage. Resold two years later with a DA for a new house for around $11 million. Then sold soon afterwards for slightly more. If someone who eventually built a house and the last estimate I heard that could be worth up to $200 million. I mean, obviously you've got a situation where cost to build the house, but good capital gain. And also recall the same situation where the I negotiated with the two neighbors to buy properties. And I did ask my clients, I actually suggested to my clients that they should buy the two adjoining properties, which would have made about uh, one and a half acres prime real estate. It was worth a fair bit of money as residential, as a future development site, which you couldn't do at the particular time. It would have been one of the best townhouse developments in the country. Didn't happen. Who knows what would have happened? But these things, over time, things change. Got to take things into account. You buy market value, you keep them, make sure a good return. Have your options open. Keep maintenance issues up to date. Buyers factor the, in the cost of repairs and maintenance. Look at your leases. Renew them when they come up. Keep them up to date. A lot of landlords forget or can't be bothered or don't chase up their property manager to keep leases up to date. You've signed a lease for a certain increase a year. Increase them as per the lease. There's nothing wrong with that. Look at your future plans and always look at the highest and best use. You know, even with residential properties, possibly you have a development application for childcare centers, 55 developments, boarding houses. You look at these things down the track. You may not be able to afford to do them straight away, but you can package these properties with the DA approval. There's no saying that you can do it. Oh, go the trouble of doing, getting the DA approval. You'll get the benefits of it. So developing an exit plan ensures that you were protected property vultures and sell on your terms. And more importantly, leave no money on the table we decide to eventually sell.
If you like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel. This is Contacetus from Seize to Properties.